Welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our very, very special guest today is Brigadier General Reserve of the Israeli Air Force, Yaron Rosen. He's a contributor to ATP Report and a friend of our family, uh, joining us from Israel live on this beautiful evening. Uh, General, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Barry. What, do you, what are your thoughts about the periodic announcements coming out of um, Hezbollah and um, similar Shia representative groups warning Israel of the 100,000 plus missiles and rockets that they have stored in various facilities. Uh, I've heard many people talk about a plan to prevent a barrage crossing the border into northern Israel that would literally put everybody north of Tel Aviv into a bunker. This is a real threat and something which is very serious from the Iranian side. Again, this is indirectly Iran, but it's directly Iran because Hezbollah is Iran. There's no, there's no difference between these two. Um, now, when you have 100,000 rockets, uh, and the number is actually higher than 100,000, sadly, it's, uh, I think, more than, more than 130,000 rockets. These 100 plus thousand missiles and rockets, how far into Israel can they penetrate? Actually, they reach all the way down to Beersheba, which is two thirds of Israel's. Uh, south of that, it's mostly desert. So most of Israel's population is under this uh, direct threat. This is something which Israel cannot live with, but it does. And how does it, does it do uh, that? Well, basically two things. First of all, uh, the active uh, air defense, that's uh, the first thing. And the second thing is a very, very strong uh, air force. Now, these two are responsible for two major plans. And, the, uh, uh, and Hezbollah and Iran know about this uh, very closely. And I actually it was in the, paper, in the papers uh, just this weekend. Um, the other side knows that if it makes a mistake, it will be barraged. They will, there will be a preemptive attack uh, on all of these missiles, on all of the stashes, and they will be responsible for the destruction of Lebanon. Basically, all these missiles are embedded in civilian uh, infrastructure, and if they push the button, Israel will be more than quick uh, to release all of its might and strength on all of these uh, stashes and the missiles will be destroyed. destroyed. Now that doesn't matter. Let me stop you for one second. I think this is an important point. When Americans here think about weapons of war, they consider them to be normally stored in military installations. Whether those installations are bases that are separate from the population or if the Army, Air Force, Marines, whatever, are deployed within uh, those fortresses that are set up uh, in remote places. Address for a second what you talked about embedded. What people don't understand here is these missiles aren't on military bases that are separate from the civilian population, but are intentionally and exclusively put into occupied areas with mass populations. They could be in hospitals, in schools, in mosques, in apartment buildings, and so on. That's very true, and that is something uh, worth uh, uh, explaining. In uh, the area between Israel's northern border all the way to Beirut, uh, Lebanon's uh, capital, you have hundreds of villages. Out of them, about 300, 350 Shiite villages. Each village has hundreds of missiles embedded in the village. When I say embedded, I mean embedded. That means that there are homes. Sometimes people live in these homes, but Hezbollah bought an apartment or a part of the, of the uh, house and embedded the rocket launches, uh, launchers 
or the missile launchers as part of the home. Now, people have no choice. This is their life, okay? They can't just go because they have nowhere else to go. So they are hostages to the people that say they, will, they are their defenders, but they are actually um, their hostages. And when they release their munitions, their missiles, Israel will hit back. It has every right to do that. And basically, because of the numbers we are talking about now, this will destroy Lebanon as we see it, as we know it today. So both sides are in sort of uh, 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 an interesting uh, equilibrium, if you will, a very dangerous one, especially when you're talking about uh, uh, an organization which is a terrorist organization, which is holding a whole country hostage, Lebanon, and is backed by a terrorist nation called Iran, which is spreading its extreme ideology all around the Middle East. Now, until now, from the Second Lebanon War, it worked. And this equilibrium, the, this mutual assured, uh, if you will, destruction. Is there a risk that these missiles can destroy Israel? They will not destroy Israel. Israel is much, much stronger than Lebanon. And they know that. And they better know that. Because when they unleash something from there, they will unleash hell from the Israeli side. However, and gladly, that's, that's what holds us. And, and let me ask you a question, though. Lebanon is a separate country from Iran. Iran has occupied southern Lebanon and made it into, well, I guess you'd call it a fortress of terror with the population held hostage, as you said, with missiles in the other bedroom or in the upstairs apartment or in the garage, knowing that if anything gets launched from the roof, it'll get picked up as a target and the Air Force will obliterate them. So the casualties, should Iran decide to do this, would be catastrophic for the Lebanese that are living in basically on armed camp, periodically, obviously, when you see these reports of an explosion, sometimes it might just be a kid going into the other room and setting off a half a dozen missiles in the house. Yes, it's a very sad story. I mean, uh, the way Iran has basically turned Lebanon and especially South Lebanon, but not only, uh, we're talking about the North as well, the Beka Valley, these areas are full of munitions, missiles, rockets. Some of them are very accurate and some of them are not. Um, but because Israel is very uh, densely populated, it is good enough for them. And when we hit back, these are all populated areas. Now, the Air Force, the Israeli Air Force, the IDF, we have our moral uh, obligation uh, to hit only the targets. But even if in every target, in every, for every missile, even if you, by mistake, kill one Lebanese and you have 130,000, what does that mean for the Lebanese people? So I think we have to understand that for them, it's a catastrophe. It's a catastrophe that Iran has exported this terror, this barrage, this potentially uh, 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 just outrageous uh, way of just arming. Uh, it's like a minefield, if you will, okay? It's just a minefield from the northern border of Israel all the way to uh, Leban the Lebanon's uh, border. And today, look, look, at, look at what's going on politically in Lebanon. Hezbollah is getting stronger. Now, my hope is that when they get more, they get stronger, they will be more responsible because they have to answer to someone, okay? But in this, in this case, uh, with Iran backing you, not necessarily. Special thank you today to ATP, good friend and contributor, General Iran Rosen uh, from Israel's Air Force. 
uh, now in the reserves. Uh, we really appreciate your political insight today. Thanks so much for joining us on ATP Report. Remember, you can always subscribe on your cell phone by sending the message TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, and send it to 88202. When you push send, you'll immediately, in the United States at least, be subscribed to our free text message service. You'll never miss one of these episodes. It's always free, and it'll take you about five seconds. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.